Leopard 2 Tank, how Germany built a war legend. What do a German tank and a race car have in common? How did a colossal failure lead to the creation of Europe's best tank? And is it really true that a Leopard 2 can survive eight direct hits? This isn't just military hardware. It's a legend that Germany has been building for 50 years. 1955. The Federal Republic of Germany has just joined NATO and immediately faces a paradox. The country that once set the standard in tank design now doesn't have a single tank of its own. The Wehrmacht is gone. Factories are either destroyed or repurposed. Engineers are under suspicion. And the entire subject of armored vehicles is politically toxic. But the Cold War leaves no choice. If Germany wants to be part of Western defense, it must rearm. Fast. The first solution is simple. American tanks. The Bundeswehr receives M47 and M48 Patton. Reliable, yes, but foreign. They were built for different battlefields, different tactics, a different doctrine of war. German generals and engineers understand this. Germany has always had its own tank philosophy, mobility, survivability, precision. And by the late 1950s, a clear decision is made. It's time to build their own. Work begins on the Leopard 1, the first attempt to revive Germany's armored warfare tradition. Germany unveiled the Leopard 1 in 1965, the first main battle tank of the post-war period. Its debut marked the return of German tank engineering, but it wasn't perfect. At the heart of the Leopard 1 concept was not armor, but mobility and firepower. The idea was that survival on the battlefield depended not on taking hits, but on spotting the enemy first, firing first, and getting out. Key specs of the Leopard 1, Leopard 1A1 to 1A5. Weight, around 40 tons. Engine, multi-fuel MB838 Cam 500, 10 cylinder, 830 horsepower. Max speed, up to 65 kilometers an hour. Main gun, 105 mm Royal Ordnance L7A3 rifled cannon, British design. Armor, up to 70 mm turret front, hull, rolled homogeneous steel. Crew, four people. Sights, day night optical sights. Thermal imagers added in later variants. Suspension, torsion bar, ammunition load, about 60 rounds. Yes, it was fast. Yes, it was accurate. Leopard 1 outperformed Soviet T-55s in optics, reliability, and smooth ride. But it had a fatal flaw, armor. Soviet APFSDS armor-piercing, fin-stabilized, discarding Sabo rounds could easily penetrate the Leopard 1. Any serious anti-tank missile strike was a death sentence. This became the key lesson for the next tank. Crew survivability must be priority one. Later versions of the Leopard 1, up to A5, received upgrades, laser rangefinders, ballistic computers, explosive reactive armor, but it was still aging technology. In the end, the Leopard 1 became an excellent training platform and a huge export success. It was delivered to Canada, Belgium, Brazil, Greece, Chile, and Turkey. Some countries still use it today, mostly for support roles or training. No, the Leopard 1 didn't become a legend, but without it, the legend of the Leopard 2 would never have existed. In the 1960s, Germany and the US asked a simple question. Why develop separate tanks when we could build one, a joint main battle tank for both armies? Thus began the MBT-70 project, the most ambitious tank program of its time. On the US side, Chrysler Defense and the Detroit Arsenal tank plant were in charge. On the German side, the engineering firm Krauss Maffei took the lead. On paper, the MBT-70 was a monster, hydro pneumatic suspension that could kneel before firing, automatic ammunition supply, speed up to 70 kilometers an hour, and its crown jewel, an experimental 152 mm gun missile launcher that could fire both shells and anti-tank missiles. 
but ambition quickly ran into reality. The US and Germany couldn't agree on the gun's caliber, the electronics, or the cost. The tank dream ballooned into budget blowouts, technological dead ends, and mutual accusations. In 1969, the project was canceled. Germany took its design insights and started building the Leopard 2. That became the turning point. Krauss Maffei focused on reliability, modularity, and long-term upgrade potential. They didn't chase sci-fi. They built a tank that would still be relevant 50 years later. That's how the story of Leopard 2 began. Not with a victory, but with someone else's failure. The Leopard 2 project started in 1970. Its creator was engineer Klaus Arnold, a man who focused not on gimmicks, but on essence. The Germans clearly defined what the future tank should be. As well protected as possible, as accurate as possible, easy to maintain and upgrade, and fully prepared for nuclear war. Seriously. A series of prototypes under the names Kyla and Leopard 2AV went into testing. One was armed with a 105mm gun, the other with a new 120mm smoothbore Rheinmetall cannon. The latter won. The Germans prioritized penetration power and accuracy over versatility. But the gun wasn't the only thing that mattered. The Leopard 2 was equipped with modular armor that could be reinforced on site, a digital sight with a thermal imager, cutting edge technology at the time, and an MTU MB873 engine producing 1500 horsepower, almost like a race car, except this one powered a 60 ton machine. No compromises, no exotic ideas, just pure German engineering, strict, precise, lethal. In 1979, the first production Leopard 2A0 entered service with the Bundeswehr. From that moment, a new benchmark began to take shape. A tank that combined armor, firepower, and intelligence. The first versions, A0, A1, and A2, were still in trial runs. They featured basic composite armor, a Rheinmetall L44 smoothbore cannon, a digital fire control system, thermal imaging, and an automated fire control interface. The crew consisted of four members, each placed in their own safety capsule. By the early 1980s, the Leopard 2A3 appeared, with upgraded communications and improved electronics. But the real breakthrough came with the Leopard 2A4, 1985. Ballistic protection was improved, especially in frontal projection. An automatic fire suppression system was introduced. Accuracy of aimed fire on the move was enhanced. Survivability increased. The tank could keep fighting even after being hit. The Leopard 2A4 became the most widely produced variant in the tank's history. It was purchased by Switzerland, Sweden, Finland, the Netherlands, Spain, Turkey, even Singapore. It was a platform with enormous potential, but the Germans didn't stop there. From the 1990s onward, the Leopard 2 entered a new era. The world is changing. The threat of nuclear war is gone. Asymmetric conflicts, ISIS, urban warfare, and drones are emerging. And the tank had to evolve in order not to become a vulnerable giant. The German response was a series of upgrades. Leopard 2A5, 1995, marked the first true redesign. The turret was given wedge-shaped armor for better protection against APF-SDS rounds. The hull front was reinforced. Turret rotation became faster, aiming more precise. New electronic stabilizers and night observation systems were installed. Leopard 2A6 came with the longer Rheinmetall L55 gun, capable of penetrating any armor over 2 kilometers the perfect counter to the T-80U or T-90. Leopard 2A6M received additional protection against mines and IEDs. This is a direct response to Iraq and Afghanistan, where tanks proved vulnerable from below. Then came 2A7, A7 Plus, the pinnacle of evolution. Protection systems against RPGs and cluster munitions were added. Air conditioning, panoramic cameras, and digital integration with infantry were installed. Prepared for active defense systems like Trophy. Optimized for urban combat and upgraded to 21st century NATO standards. 
This is an armored vehicle for the 21st century, networked, capable of working in tandem with UAVs, reconnaissance drones, and even AI-enabled combat modules. The Leopard is no longer just an armored platform, it's part of the digital battlefield. For a long time, the Leopard 2 remained a fearsome yet theoretical weapon, feared but not yet tested in a real meat grinder. Everything changed in the 1990s. Kosovo and Bosnia were the first real operations. German tanks took part in peacekeeping missions. Direct combat was minimal, but the Leopard proved to be a reliable machine with high mobility and survivability in difficult weather. Afghanistan, 2007. Canada deployed the Leopard 2A6M to Kandahar. There, the tanks faced mines, IEDs, and Taliban ambushes. In one incident, the tank survived a 15-kilogram IED explosion. The crew was unharmed, and the vehicle remained operational. But the deployment revealed issues. The Leopard's size and weight limited its maneuverability in mountains and villages, and it required complex logistics. Syria. Turkish Leopard 2A4s fought against ISIS, and here came a troubling signal. Several tanks were hit, some destroyed. The reason? Lack of additional protection for the turret and underbelly. Outdated modifications weren't ready for urban warfare against anti-tank missiles. But the real test came in Ukraine, 2023. Leopard 2A6 and A5 tanks were sent to the front as part of Allied aid. Ukrainian crews underwent accelerated training, and on the battlefield, the tanks quickly proved their worth. They took part in offensive, withstood strikes from Krasnopol shells, Karnyet missiles, and FPV drones. One Leopard took eight hits and still evacuated under its own power. In another case, the crew survived a direct drone bomb hit. This is no longer a legend on paper. It's a real shield, proven in a new kind of war. When it comes to top-tier tanks, Comparisons are inevitable. Leopard 2, Abrams, Challenger 2, T-80. Each of them has its loyal following and a record of victories, but let's set the myths aside and focus on facts. Leopard 2 vs. Abrams, USA. Both are heavy, modern tanks armed with a 120mm gun and advanced electronics. The Abrams has the edge in combat experience and rate of fire, it's seen action in Iraq, Syria, and Afghanistan. But the Leopard is easier to maintain, more fuel efficient, especially the A6, and features modular armor that make battlefield repairs quicker. Most importantly, the Leopard is an export success, while Abrams is rarely shared with allies in its complete form. Leopard 2 vs. Challenger 2, Great Britain. The Challenger follows a unique philosophy rifled gun instead of smoothbore, a finicky transmission, and limited modernization. It's strong in defense roles, but lacks versatility. The Leopard is lighter, faster, easier to upgrade, and more adaptable to different armies' needs. Leopard 2 vs. T-80 and T-90, Russia. The T-80 and T-90 are faster tanks thanks to gas turbines and are more compact, but they fall behind in armor protection especially at the front. Their weak point is the risk of ammo detonation when hit, with isolated ammunition storage and secure crew compartments. In terms of accuracy and range, the Leopard outperforms the Soviet design approach, especially in variants armed with the L-55 gun. And perhaps more importantly, the Leopard 2 wasn't built for just one army. It was built for dozens. It has been continuously upgraded for over 40 years. It may not be the best tank by the numbers, but it might just be the most balanced in history. So, real combat has revealed the true strengths and weaknesses of the Leopard 2. The strengths are crew survivability, separate combat modules, protected crew capsules, fire suppression system, all of it works. Even after hitting an anti-tank missile or a Shahed drone, the crew has a chance to survive and get out of the tank. Accuracy in targeting systems. Stabilized optics and thermal imagers give the Leopard an edge in tank duels. It can spot first, fire first, and often, that's all it takes to win. Modularity and maintainability. 
armor blocks or sighting systems can be swapped out in the field. For 21st century warfare, that's critical. Reliable engine and drivetrain. The MTU MB873 may not be Formula One tech, but it's not temperamental. Leopard tanks stay operational longer under intense use. Weaknesses are weight and size. Leopard 2 is almost 65 tons of armor. In Ukraine's muddy terrain or in mountainous regions, it can struggle with mobility. It's hard to evacuate, doesn't fit on old bridges or narrow crossings. Upgrade limitations. Some versions, especially older A4s, are hard to modernize without a complete overhaul. This limits their survivability on today's high-tech battlefields. Logistical demands. A modern Leopard needs regular maintenance, a steady supply chain, and trained personnel. It's not a T-72 you can patch up with a hammer, but overall, it's a machine built to take a hit and keep moving. Leopard 2 is more than just a successful tank, it's a philosophy. In a world where most armored vehicles either become obsolete or too expensive to deploy en masse, the Leopard 2 strikes a rare balance between technology, efficiency, and real-world performance. This is a tank that survived the collapse of an international project, went through dozens of upgrades, proved itself in actual wars, became a backbone of armies across four continents, and is still evolving with the view toward AI and drone integration. Not because it's perfect, but because it's honest. And perhaps that's what makes it a legend.